12 years ago, living and doing research in Venezuela while the political situation rapidly deteriorated, I began to be called upon by journalists, policymakers, foundations, and NGOs for my assessment of the situation. I did so in the form of conversations, presentations, and consulting reports. In 2012, I founded with the Washington Office in Latin America a blog called Venezuelan Politics and Human Rights. I curated it for eight years until July of this year, providing commentary on the Venezuela crisis several times a week. The blog led to media work as well as opinion articles and advocacy in Venezuela, Latin America, the United States, and Europe. All this day-to-day -day advocacy was based on a rather abstract scholarly perspective that can be broadly called neoliberian conflict theory. The essence of this approach is that social reality is irreducibly multi-causal, resolutely non-teleological, and research therefore needs to be empirical and inductive. Put differently, it does not presume economic determination as a Marxist approach would, nor does it have an exclusive focus on politics as much Anglophone political science does. Rather, it sees these causes along with ideological factors as having relative autonomy in coming together in unique historical clusters with no necessary direction. There is in this approach an assumption of consistent human tendency to seek monopoly and disempower competitors, something that captures the most important contributions of both Marxism and Anglophone political science. Brought back to earth, this outlook means that in my analysis and advocacy, I've tried to understand all sides of Venezuela's political conflict, have looked at actual empirical evidence, and have not presumed there is any fixed historical direction. However, there has been a consistent normative focus on advocating for the rights of Venezuelans being trampled by national and international actors seeking monopoly power. Over the past 10 or 12 years, I've accumulated masses of consulting reports, blog posts, opinion pieces, and academic articles. This year, I'll be begin bridging the gap between this rather abstract methodological outlook and the very concrete empirical material I have with mid-level conceptual analysis in a two-volume book called Venezuela's Transition to Illiberalism. This year, I'll be working on the first volume looking at Hugo Chavez's second term as president. The book will have chapters on the economy and corruption, electoral politics, media, protests, higher education, indigenous policy, citizen security, and international relations. As you can see, the goal is not specialization, but breadth in the tradition of comparative historical sociology. Thank you.